Uh, welcome to Build Series uh, 4 of the uh, Ford High Body CC01 build. Uh, just wanted to uh, verify here. I'm actually uh, mounting my V-Black rims up. I uh, thought I'd give a quick little cat video on how to do that. Um, so, you guys see in here, there's a little uh, indentation lip inside the actual rim where your actual tire end is going to get shoved inside that. And if you can see too, we have foams inside there for all the new guys that really don't know much about foams and the tires. It's actually going to, most of your tires come with foams. What you'll do is you'll actually just lay the foam inside the rim and shove it in there completely flat all the way around the tire. Uh, you're going to take Take your actual inner bead of the rib and shove it kind of inside the bead. Oh, you guys can see that. Inside the bead of the actual rib. Let me go ahead and do that real fast. I'll show you what it kind of looks like. All the way around inside there. It just kind of rests in the actual slit of the rib. I'm going to kind of just push that in all the way around. There we go, I think I have it. That's what it'll look like. Just kind of seed it in there a little bit. You have room for your holes. Then you uh, take your uh, B-line rings, your screws, Trust the screw in because it makes it go a lot faster. And then get them started. Got another screw. Go across side here. I that up it's good to snug, I don't want to over tighten. Especially with this gun. Let's kind of give you guys a little look. But as you can see, the ring is actually compressing, compressing the actual tire to the rim. Which causes us not to have to glue these tires in place. So when, it, when I decide to uh, Get some wheel weights for this, it'd be a lot easier to, uh, a lot easier to put wheel weights on my tires with the bead box. Just kind of go in a criss crash corner here with my screws. So it can evenly uh, press the tire down. Alright, last screw. Our B box will be done. As you can see, our other three are here and ready to go. Zipped in here. There it is, guys. That is how B blocks are installed. And the same with the other side, all the way around. But, uh, those are rims and tires. Um, like I said, the rims I went with are the uh, B like axials. And then the Lozy tires with the mini, uh, mini specials. So those are the rims of tires I went with. Go ahead and throw this stuff in there. Um, two, a battery came in. I went with a uh, Venom Power Pack. Uh, one thing I do like about these Venom Power Packs are, one, the waterproof. Because it's a nickel metal, they're already covered in casing. 
and the ends of the head on them. Uh, they give you almost majority of your ends in the package, so it's going to save me from having to sign you and all that stuff because it has my deeds in it, too, which is uh, real nice. There it is right there. But uh, that just pops right on the end of my battery. I'm good to go. So uh, I was going to go with the LiPo. Everybody knows that most of my trucks and most of my stuff I run this LiPo. But here's the situation of problem that we come into here with the LiPo. I would have to modify my tray for a LiPo to fit. Which, in a nickel metal pack, they're designed to fit in this truck. So, I figured, you know, for this trail run truck here, I think this 3,000 pack is going to suit run be good. So, that's, that's that. Just wanted to show you that a couple things real quick. But, uh, right now we're going to go ahead, get our stuff laid out. We're going to actually do any electronics. Uh, soldering on the uh, speed controller, uh, getting our electronics installed, ready to go. So uh, let me go ahead and get uh, everything laid out here, get our ESC um, and all that good stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, gang, we're back. Uh, as you can see, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here, but. Uh, we are going to plastic dip our servo. Uh, this here is just a cheap servo that I've had laying around. It's new. It's, it came out of one of my race trucks, I think it is. I'm going to use it for now until I get a servo that I really want. But uh, you can see I have the servo tied to a pencil. Um, set it to where it can be hung like right that uh, in my container. What I'm going to do is I'm going to waterproof the servo with plastic dip. Um, if nobody knows what Plasti Dip is, uh, it's actually something that you can dip the end of tools in for grips, stuff like that. But it's a great waterproofing thing. Um, I've, uh, I've watched this on Medic's channel. Uh, he's real good with it. He uh, swears on this stuff, so this stuff works great. So uh, everything he's kind of guided me towards has been great. So. Let's go ahead and do this. So, uh, as you can see, it's like a little uh, soupy substance. But uh, you just take your servo with no servo arm or nothing on it. Uh, have it ready to go. Go ahead and take it. And just dump it in. To the tip. Pull it out. Let it run and drip a little bit. I guess this says it takes about uh, 30 minutes to set. For a decent set temperature, for a decent setting, and it's going to drip off any access that it has, but not have you. That is why I like to uh, keep the uh, container around to set it in the container. So, there we go. Set it on there. Close up our plastic dip. Go ahead and let that set, put it to the side. But, uh, that should be good on our servo. Should have it decently waterproof. May need to be dipped again, we'll see as we go. But uh, we'll go ahead and set this aside, kind of run it over here, get it out the way. Uh, so anyways, our ESC that we are running is the uh, TDU 10 bk It's actually the stock ESC that comes with the uh, with the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and run this ESC, and then uh, the radio equipment that I'm gonna be running. This is called a Blue MX. It's gonna be for my Spectrum radio. It's a uh, a Chinese uh, knockoff of a, of a regular for a three-channel Spectrum uh, receiver. But uh, let you guys get a little quick look at that there. But uh, that's going to be the receiver we're going to be running. Uh, so let me go ahead, get my area set up, turn on my soldering station, which that's a newer soldering station. I haven't used that one yet, so uh, we'll get to kind of see how that works and how that goes. So uh, let me go ahead, get myself ready to get myself set up, and uh, 
right back. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, as you can see, the uh, tamaya end has been cut off of the ESC. We are going to go ahead and make our saddle, put our uh, Dean's connector in. As you can see, I got my uh, Dean's connector all ready to go. It's all rubber band into my needle those pliers because these can get mighty darn hot. But uh, this here is my uh, liquid flex. I'll go ahead and uh, add some of that to my wires here. I love that stuff. It works great. My uh, <coughs> excuse me, saddle here ready. Snag up a little side of you. Oh, I love that flex. Sucks that side right out of there. Alright, there's one. You guys can see that, but our ends, our tips have been uh, soldered over, ready to go. Tip here. Okay. <clears throat> go ahead and uh, add a little flex to our leaves connector here, and uh. This flex here, guys, is a, uh, a liquid style flex. I've really had a lot of good luck with that style flex. I get it at my local hobby store. And uh, yeah, I just kind of really love that stuff. It works so great. Get a little sound here on that. Like that. Close this up, put it all away. The saddle I use, guys, is a silver saddle. To me, it's been the, works the best for uh, what I needed to do. So, uh, all right. Like I said, we have a straight tube. It's already out there. I might have said that maybe not, so I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to give it a good little tug, make sure we got a good connection. So we're going to back to the place here and check out our connections. Oh yeah, very nice. You guys get a good close-up shot. Got a very good, strong uh, solder connection there. You can go ahead and take that off. Uh, slide up our straight tube. Oh, 
little piece. Cut my tubing in right here. Alright, there we go. I could have done a better uh, straight tube job if I would have cut that better right, but uh, anyways, our uh, ESC is ready to go. Uh, good side of connection, we're ready. Uh, the Soto 2 is in the other room, I meant to have that in here, but it was all actually cured, set, it's ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some other stuff ready here so we can actually get our ESC and all that mounted in the truck and uh, get our receiver out, get that all set up so we can get a stop the truck so we can uh, hopefully maybe hear this thing run. Alright guys, we'll be right back. Okay guys, so uh, we got the uh, ESC, we got our end, our end uh, soldered up on there, straight tube wrapped. So our ESC is now ready to be powered up. <clears throat> uh, the next step here is going to be step 21, which uh, basically shows just kind of getting everything hooked up so we can get the uh, servo centered, which here's our uh, plastic dip servo. I kind of just poked some holes in there where, the, uh, where our plastic dip had kind of went over the holes, so I just got some real fire holes in there, but we're all sealed up. Nice sealed tight, waterproof, or I should say water resistant servo. So, uh, another thing electronic, you guys gotta remember this nothing electronic is ever waterproof because it's electrical. You just never, never know. But uh, this here is now water resistant, so uh, that's all ready to go. Uh, the parts tree we need basically is all the servo parts which is uh, parts tree B. So uh, we have that. We have our parts bag E, which has our screws and stuff in it that we need. But uh, there we go. We have everything laid out. Let me go ahead and get the stuff off the parts tree. We're off, that's right, sorry. We're gonna need the battery and uh, receiver and our radio. So let me go ahead Get everything laid out, set up, and we will be ready to go. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so uh, we have this thing hooked up here. We have everything in the set. The only thing it says is not to hook up the motor. Uh, so our ESC is plugged in. We have our main cord of our ESC going into the throttle position. Um, this ESC here, too, has a actual power, uh, actual wire that comes in. It goes, plugs into your to your uh, battery band port, <clears throat> right straight into there, and uh, now what we're going to do is we have our battery plugged in to the ESC, we'll go ahead and we'll hit the switch, <clears throat> I have already binded this to my uh, Spectrum DX3R, that's the radio I'm going to be using on this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but yeah, we, uh, our servo is operating, you guys can see that. Just this better here so you guys can see the actual stuff flex. See that uh, rubbery stuff that we have out there. It flexes really nice. It doesn't tear. So, very, very nice. But, uh, our servo is centered. So, we have that all in position and ready to go. <clears throat> now that our servo is in position, shows us uh, taking our parts here. This is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what's come off of parts B, which is, this is the Fataba end. They also have another end for some other brands. So, uh, so you guys see that. That out the way. 
but the, what we need is the pajama. <clears throat> if you guys should see the point there, it's at this one you guys should see. Hopefully. Point down and right there. So uh, our servo needs to be sitting like this. We're going to take this, just like so. Try to set that straight up and down like that. Push that out of there. So. All right. As you can see, turns well. <clears throat> now it shows we're going to take this bigger piece here, that's going to slide right over that, right over the nipple of the uh, arm that we had put in. Now, charger's going off, battery's charged. <laughs> uh, we did all that, we should real fast here, take this here, get this threaded iron, which is going to be, you guys should see that, it's going to go on this end here, this threaded started, get my tool here, <clears throat> that threaded iron, that there is for the servo horn, Turn around to uh, get connected. Alright. Did I do that right? No, actually, I didn't. I need to reverse that. My bad, guys. Actually needs to go on the uh, other side of the uh, server arm here. There we go. Do that all over again here. Quick. <clears throat> nice and snug. All right, we got it right. So, another again, we have another lip there on the server arm, which is going to go on the lip of that. Rest just like that. Then we have a washer that uh, falls into place right there in the small hole. Hope you guys can see that. Then we take our, uh, I believe, our smallest screw here, if I'm not mistaken. here. Wrap that on down to the side. Okay. Start that down. And there it is, folks. The steering servo is ready to go, and it's water resistant. Very nice. This here was the actual screw that came off of that servo. Excuse me, man. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead get the few other things that I need set out here for the next step. Uh, which will be step 22. And that's going to be actually installing the servo. So uh, let me go ahead, get that stuff out, and uh, we'll be uh, right back, guys. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, these parts here came off of uh, parts tree D. Uh, this is going to be a part of the servo mounting process here. Uh, we're going to take this uh, our rod here, which is our uh, <coughs> to attach the servo, the servo arm, to actually control the steering. So we'll go ahead, we'll get our ends put on. Get them nice and threaded down. Just put the pliers here. 
Try not to drop the radio. There we go. So, uh, go ahead, get these nice and threaded down. I'm going to try to probably go all the way down, close to the bottom, but not all the way. Got to stop out right there. It actually has a measurement on the paper here of uh, how far in you should actually go. So, uh, let's check and see. We'll get this all the way in here. Check our measurements and see how uh, close we actually are. Man, you gotta love it when you're right on the first try. So, uh, there's that all in a nutshell. Easy peasy. Um, then we need uh, three, uh, three by ten millimeter screws and three three millimeter washers. <clears throat> okay, now, with your front end this way, here's the front end of the truck. <clears throat> this is your server mounting area. Um, they have you do is uh, server will get dropped into place going at this direction. It's going to drop in like so. It's kind of where, where you're going to be setting at the servo. The third, they only actually have two screws going in there. One goes on the front top, and then one will actually go into this mount here. So, this mount here, we can actually go ahead and install now. Um, It'll actually go, the screw hole will actually go on the bottom screw. So let's grab our washer and our uh, screw here. Let's see, maybe. Alright. Slide that in there like that. Pop that in the, through the little rubber there of our sealer of our water protector. Screwdriver here. That pretty snug. <laughs> All right. There it is. Very easy. Wrap this into place, and if you guys can see this here, put this where you guys can. Our actual servo mount, say, it's actually like a tray, and it's sliding adjustable. That's just, the, the tongue here actually fits straight into the groove, which makes it slidable, which is really nice. Really size servo I think that you're going to use. So we'll take another screw, and another washer here. There go. I'm going to put it the uh, other opposite end of the hole. Alright. Started. Alright, there it is. And then the uh, where the last screw of washer comes in the hand. Slide in there, there we go. Put this out of our way. Slide this forward. And inside here we actually have a spot where our screw is going to screw right in. To actually hold the bracket in the place for the other side of the servo. There it is. So you guys can get a good look at that. Our servo is in. Right on. Okay, now we're going to take our iron here that we made. One is gonna pop in here. So the other one will go in the heel. Our steering servo should now be mounted. Let's 
go ahead. We still have the uh, receiver and stuff hooked up. We'll go ahead and power her up. We should have still. Very nice. Smooth. I like it. All right. So we had to shut that off. Shut the radio off. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get step 30 or 23, excuse me, set up for our, uh, the rest of our truck build here. So I'll be uh, right back. Okay, gang. Step 73 here. All right. Uh, this here is uh, part E1. It's the uh, actual piece that's going to set right down here, like so, for our servo and our ESC. Or, I'm sorry, for our receiver and ESC to uh, actually set into place. So, I now actually do have the battery unplugged, so we'll get that out the way. Um, we'll take our uh, flat bottom here. Uh, a lot of times with, uh, with these, Right here. And I can take uh, a little bit of uh, maybe some power shot here uh, to clean the bottom of these to get a good uh, good clean surface for our sticky tape. That way it can last longer. And really just wipe down our surfaces really good. Clean them. That way we know the secret tape's really going to stick good. You know, oil on your fingers can cause the secret tape really not to really work right. What not, so. Now, take our exacto knife here. We will. Peel off our layer of tape that holds the sticky tape in place. Peel that off. Stick one at the bottom of our ES or receiver. Or ESC, sorry. Wow. Alright, rub that in pretty good. Then we'll uh, make our next layer out. Knife down, and then always, like I said, make sure with this one here, it's going to sit this way in the truck, these top posts, if you want the uh, ESC to kind of get stuck right out of there. So, give it a good snug push down there. Now, right now I have not waterproof the ESC, um, or I'm sorry, water resist. You can take this ESC apart and then dip it in our plastic dip, and that will help uh, help waterproof it. But right now, I'm not going to do that. This is basically going to be a scale scale style truck uh, because of the uh, whole hard body situation. I don't think I'm going to run this in water right now. Maybe some shallow stuff, which if I do that, it's not going to really affect anything. So. Go ahead and cut this little bit of this tape off and we'll need all of this. Alright. And again, peel off our uh, end here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Come on with me. Take that right off of there. Stick that on a clean surface. Push that down real good. Take our knife. And stick that on here. Not where I want it. There we go. Push it down pretty snug there. There we go. 
Now, I guess we can go ahead and run our, uh, our wire here. We kind of tuck it around like that. We just kind of run it through. There we are. I'm not going to put no tube or anything on it. I'm just kind of somebody getting it out of the way. So uh, now we're going to take our box. Now that we have it all stuck on, move the wires out of the way, and this slides right over the posts. Give it a nice little slight push down, and uh, there we have it. Close my knife up here. Throw our papers in the garbage. Alright, uh, take our uh, three screws here, which I have one of them as well. One. These screws here are three by ten millimeter. And our screwdriver. Whoops. Nice magnetic screwdriver there. I love that. Put that in there. Get started. Go ahead and grab another one. Get started. Then our third one. And then we're going to make life a lot easier. Just kind of give you guys a look. That's where the screws go. Go ahead. Just get this little there. And there it is. Our ESC and our receiver is mounted. She ain't going nowhere. All right. Uh, then while we're here and have this stuff in front of us, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our yellow and yellow motor wires. Get those plugged in like that. Wire going in between them. There we go. All right. All right. And then blue green is what I believe to do here. All right. Now wires. I uh, just did it again. Get this out from here again. Out of what? There we are. Okay, wires I will be cleaning up. I run um, wire conduit through it because I like to clean it up, make it look a lot nicer. But uh, now we'll take our switch here, which is turn another wire, that wire out the way. Make sure our on position is that way. This switch will go right here. The upward. Make sure this is. Right to that off that away. So make sure you guys look at your switch. You actually have your uh, stuff in the right spot. You're out of the right area. Not like getting it all together and find out that you had it plugged in wrong. Or, you know, everybody I believe has done that before. Uh, 
all right, guys, I got started. Get the somewhat snug. I don't want to totally, totally tight that is. We do need to make room for adjustment. It's pretty well snug. These are a little screw, so I don't want to over tighten them and strip them. Alright. Switch is set in place. Now, battery compartment side there. You know what? I want to hear this thing roar. I want to hear it move. And get our radio on. Battery. Alright. I think we actually have to set up. Let's shut off. Alright guys, let me uh, go ahead, get the next area set up, check over this book for this ESC, see what we need to do, and I'll be right back. Alright folks, I figured out a problem. Uh, I had to rebind the uh, spectrum receiver, that was the whole situation I was having. Very minor, rebound it, and uh, we now have actual full throttle. Now, the way I actually done this was, <clears throat> I had turned the truck on, I'm not gonna do it again, but I had turned the truck on, I took something small, and then this light here flashed once. With my transmitter on, when I turned the truck on, the transmitter was already on, <clears throat> With my throttle in the neutral position, not even hitting the trigger whatsoever, I tapped the button there. I, t I, I uh, <clears throat> held it down for like five seconds or less. This LED light here started flashing. Like just a, a slow, just a bloop, bloop, bloop. You know, kind of like that. Uh, I put the throttle in full throttle position. I tapped the same button again. Now my LED light flashed twice, like a rapid double, like beep, 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 without the noise, of course. That's what the LED light did. I put the throttle into full brake position, tapped the ESC, my light went out, which supposedly setup was supposedly done. I shut the, <coughs> excuse me, I shut the uh, truck off, turned the truck back on, and this is what we have. Guys, here, steering, and throttle, and reverse. So, uh, our ESC is set up. Uh, once you find the English uh, part of the book of setting up the ESC, it's actually really simple. So, uh, yeah, I'm really stoked. That's another thing done. Knocked off the list. Go ahead and shut the truck off. Got the uh, off position. Move the truck out of the way. And uh, let me see. Uh, our next step would be tires and ribs, which we have already installed the ribs to the bead locks. Cause we did bead locks instead. So uh, let me get the rest of the stuff set up. We will uh, slap all that in there and then uh, 
I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so uh, here we go. We have a lot of parts today out here. These are quite a few of the steps. Um, this here is the uh, battery uh, holder. This is actually step 27. And I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead just a hair. And then this is the clip. The uh, battery post is really simple. You get your three holes here. But you get your three holes here. There are three things like that. This slides straight up and in like so. Take our pin, slide our pin in there, and hopefully, there it is, lock it into place. There we go. So you guys see that? Pin is in, holds our battery into place. Very nice. That step is done. I wanted to do that because I was going to move the truck around instead of pulling the battery back out. I figured I'd go ahead and uh, slap that in there and get that part done. So, to go ahead and start, grab our wheels here. These are our wheel caps. Slap this over here. Put our wheel caps over there. So, uh, on our front wheels, uh, we have, you know what, let's go ahead and install our front bumper, which I'm going to go ahead and install, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it on there, due to the fact, I don't know if it's going to look right with the uh, Ford hard body. But like I said, we'll go ahead, we'll install it, we'll see what she looks like now. So you guys have an idea. But there's three holes here. Then we have our three holes in our uh, casing here. Or in our bumper, sorry. These are electric here. Oops. Alright, so we'll see what she looks like now. Pushed down too hard, bust our bottom up posts. screws down in place here like so. Get them started. Said I don't want to strip those out to kind of get them started a little bit. Alright now we have all three in place and started so I'm gonna go ahead get these zipped in. There it is. Front bumper is mounted. Nice crash guard there. That is done. Alright, now, our next step here, I'm using quite a few different parts here, pieces. I'm trying to spot for these. There we go. Ah. These here are plastic bearings. Again, they're using plastic, but hey, can't complain. I guess, well, I guess you can, but it ain't going to do you no good. But uh, anyways, these will probably eventually get changed out, but uh, these are what they give you as a plastic berry. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this grease here, this green grease. And uh, pack our berries down here with some of this green grease here. Go ahead and shove that inside the wheel there. There we go. Like so, very nice. Put up my fingers. Put the green grease out of the way. Then, we're going to take our little uh, shaft here that they give us for the wheel. So, Set it and I'll get it up closer so you guys can see. 
but there's a hole inside the shaft that slides right into it. So, then we take our stud here for our wheel, it slides over it and this actually sits, seats right into, oh yeah, there it is. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me turn this about away here. But our pin actually seats inside there just like so. So that is seated. Now we're gonna take one of our wheels and tires here. It has the same hex on it. Go ahead and set that into place. That was seated. Take our driver, our nut here. So, sanitize the right about now. Okay. Put our nut driver here. There it is. And one of the mistakes I think here is we have no threads left in our caps. So I was kind of hoping we'd be able to use our, our fake locker caps here, but uh, our shafts here just aren't long enough to, uh, to get that out there. Let's see. I'll let you guys get a closer look here. These actually thread into the position to uh, lock our caps in the place, which I don't think we're going to be able to get so lucky to use those. That kind of sticks. I was kind of looking forward to uh, using those. It kind of gives it that more uh, realistic kind of look. I may end up going with a different style nut, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to set that aside, but. Uh, our fronts are done, well, our fronts will be done. But I'm going to go ahead and do the back here and kind of show you guys the back. Uh, the back has no grease because it doesn't actually have a washer whatsoever. That's only in the front because they sink in. So our backs, we're going to do the same. We'll take our rod here, a little skinny rod. Get a hold of it here. Alright, got it. Boogers ready to get hold of. And again, get it in the hole, slide it in, take another one of these, same thing. Make sure it's the slot of that goes in. That's going to seat right over that shaft. We'll take our wheel here. Slide it over. Take our nut. Go ahead and tighten our nut down. Like I said, I think guys, I think I'm going to have to go with some smaller Smaller style of nuts because I really, really was looking forward to using the uh, cap covers in it. Just gives it more uh, realistic looks. I mean, that looks pretty decent, but kind of wanted to go with the whole blacked out look. But uh, yeah, so uh, our wheels are installed. Like I said, the other side, instead of boarding, guys, I'm going to go ahead, button down the other side, go ahead and do it to the other side. And, uh, we are a rolling chassis besides our wire mesh here. Um, we'll probably do a wire high job and uh, after that guys, this thing's basically in a nutshell is built. Besides doing our, uh, might do a slight little run video to show it off, how it runs. And then uh, we're doing hard body, so uh, go ahead, let me get this other side buttoned up here real quick. 
All right, gang. So uh, as you can see, we got her together. She is uh, ready to run. Um, you know, minus the uh, wire mess we have here. Um, <clears throat> I have a uh, wire conduit that I use in all my scale rigs to clean up my mess here and make it look more scale, look more, uh, a lot cleaner, better look. But uh, that basically is just, you know, tucking your wire the way you want and wrapping it and all that stuff. I'm not going to bore you guys with that in this build series. Uh, basically, guys, this build series is done. I mean, we have a whole truck assembled and it's, it's ready to, it's ready to, it's ready to run. Uh, the only thing we yet have done, not done yet, was the uh, hard body. Go ahead and grab that. Oh, okay, I might have just made some movements here. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so uh, the hard body, I need to get it prepped. These holes here are going to need to be get filled in. Uh, stuff that I'm not going to be using, fill them in, whatnot. Uh, what I think I'm going to do with that part of the build series is uh i just may end up doing it where i just kind of do a little bit of work and then i'll just kind of gradually come back and show you guys kind of what i've done uh on the whole hard hard body series because uh mainly in the whole hard body build part of it the aspect of it is going to be a lot of uh filling sanding and all that good stuff which just to kind of get you guys a little informed. Filling, I'm using uh, Bondo Body Filler for, uh, for filling our holes. And then the sanding aspect, I'm using uh, 320 grit sandpaper. But yeah, I'll probably do like uh, some other stuff, but I mean, the whole actual build series, I would say in an aspect, in an actual, I would actually say it, it's done, the uh, actual build. But uh, I will come back and let you guys know how the body, as I get going on it, I'll uh, shoot some more video, showing you the progress of the actual hard body. And getting that all prepared but uh anyways i did promise you guys a short run bit on this uh it's going to be here in the house so it's not going to be a real big area to run but i, I do want to show you guys how well it does run i'm uh, very impressed with it so uh let me go ahead and get the uh get everything situated to do a short little uh running video for you guys to show you guys how this thing runs so uh we'll be right back all right guys so uh here it is steering acceleration and let me tell you what guys this thing is quick i am really really shocked this thing will pull wheelies Of course, you know, speed is not for crawling, but that's all good. We're going to have some fun with this rig. But, uh, she goes slow, too. Uh, there you go. But anyways, you guys get the gist of it. Um... Let me go ahead and uh, get this stuff shut off and uh, I'll be right back. Alright guys, so uh, you guys seen it run. It runs great. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with it so far. Uh, like I said, once we get the uh, body done, get our wire mess here fixed up. And, which I'm not going to bore you guys with doing this wire mess. Uh, I can show you guys later how it turned out or something, you know, when I do some body work on that body. But, uh, anyways, this will be the end 
of the Build Series 4 of the CCO1. Uh, now, like I said, the CCO1 does come with a body. Uh, it was the Ford Bronco 1973 version. Uh, I will be painting that someday, but right now it's going to stay unpainted and not be used at the moment. So that's basically going to finish the build series for the CC01, the actual chassis and the build. So like I said, I will give you guys some updates on the body. Uh, I'm really not in a complete rush on it. I'm going to probably start the Bondo and the stuff like that. It may take me a week or two because Right now we're going through storms outside, it's raining and all that good stuff, can't paint in the rain. So uh, anyways, that's the end of the build series. Don't forget to thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, make sure you guys comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching my videos, guys. <laughs> Alrighty, peace. Make sure you subscribe for more RC action to come your way.